Hello, my friends. All right, let's do this. This is Christmas in July time. This is the National Sports Collectors Convention. And this YouTube is going to be long. I'm actually probably going to break it up just so people can watch the sections that they want. But I am so excited to talk about this with y'all. I just watched Ryan's video, Car Collector 2's video, which was great. He had some great stuff. And um, I just, I get asked a lot of questions. And it's all, all my stuff when I respond is my opinion. I am not the end all be all of how you should do it, what is right, what is wrong. I just want to take some time and tell you how I approach nationals what to expect, how things are going to go, trade night, all that good stuff. But I want to do it orderly so, I, so it makes it easy to understand, especially for those who are going for the first time. This is only my third Nationals ever. I, I didn't go till I was 38. I went to Chicago, which is where it is this year, the first time. It's where I met Ryan, actually. Um and a lot of other people, and then uh, Atlantic City last year, and then this is back in Chicago. So, got a good list to, to kind of break it down for you and, and kind of show you what I do. And it, it's interesting to have always heard about it my whole life and to finally go for the first time two years ago um, and get into this. So, anyway, uh, let's get started. Let's get started. So, First of all, let's do this. What to expect? Expect, regardless of age, of type of collection, of what you've seen, what you have, what you want, all of that, that it is going to be overwhelming, that you will see things that you have never seen before, that you will be taken aback by the sheer scope and size of this. If you've grown up going to car shows like I did, it still was overwhelming. I heard people say, hey, Jimmy, it's going to be overwhelming. And I was like, yeah, man, whatever. It's a show. It's a convention center. I've done that a thousand times. Whatever. And I was like, oh, oh, my. This is incredible. Because it's not just dealers with cards. It's, it's stratified a little bit where you have people that have tables of dollar bins and quarter bins, huge tables of it. And people just sit there for three days of the show just going through that stuff. And that's all that table has. Then you've got the high-end basketball tables, like five or six of those to 15 that are really awesome and another 40 that have great stuff. But the, like, all the Jordan exquisites, all the LeBron exquisites, Jordan 10 rookies, Jordan, all of this. And then you'll have uh, tables and dealers that like this guy is just selling pennants and memorabilia from baseball, no cards, just memorabilia and pennants from 1944 prior. And that's his whole table. One guy was just stuff from Rudy Rudiger, the Notre Dame guy, the movie, and just signed Rudy stuff. And it was just all over the place. Just a Jackie Robinson table. I mean, it has. Everything, everything is here. A table that's just autographed football helmets. OBJ at LSU, OBJ at New York Giants, Joe Namath to Leonard Fournette to all the Bama guys, all the teams they signed with in the draft, you name it. And then in the back of the convention center is you've got entire behind all this stuff to see where you can stop and buy and all this. You've got a constant running autograph show where it's everybody from, you know, Mike Tyson to Alex Rodriguez, and they're just going and going and going, and lines are backing up, and it's just a constant, massive autograph show. And then to the side, you've got the Breakers Pavilion, where all the people you hear about breaking live are live at their tables at National Breaking the whole time. So needless to say, it's a lot to take in. So typically, I'm not a... Uh, a guy that, like, if I go to a car show in Hickory this weekend, I'm not going to take a list of stuff that I want, blah, 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 blah. But for this, I think it's important, and here's why. Because you're going to go there, and you're going to buy stuff, and you're going to come home. And I did this a little bit the first year. I still came home with stuff I definitely wanted and was psyched to get. But you don't want to go and just get 
blinded by the flashing lights, pick up a lot of stuff, run out of money and cards early, and then go home and say some of those cards drop in value. And you're like, my first national, man, I went and all I came back with was a bunch of cards that aren't worth anything anymore. And um, I didn't really knock out any of the stuff that I was working on before I went to national. Uh, I went to national hoping for this, but I just forgot about it because it's, it's so much that it will make you forget about stuff. It made me my first time around. So expect awesome, expect awesomeness and all of this wonderful stuff. But the best thing I can say to you is have a plan and have a focus. So for me, what I do is I've got certain sets I work on. Not everybody works on sets, but I've got certain ones I work on. Some of you all see me post about this. I've been putting together the dual acetate set, right? I've got it down to about five cards left. What I'll do is I write down those five cards I need, and I'm going to come back with at least one of those cards. I'm going to make some progress to that set. So even if I go buy stuff that I don't have on a list, and then I couldn't even put down a list because I don't know it until I get there and see something awesome, which will happen. And I'll leave all kinds of room for the national surprise. But I'm going to come home with some progress on something that will make me thrilled that when I get home, I've made some progress on a set, on a PC, on a player, on something. John Wall, Tyler Eulis, Jamal Murray, I'm going to come home with something of those guys. So even if everything else, I get excited and like see a shiny bass boat like I do, you know, like a redneck. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. And just go toward that. And then I come home and it's junk a year later. I can be like, well, you know what? That didn't work out. But that national is awesome because I made progress on these things. So you can see right now I got a book. I write it all down first. Now, look, I'm not so old. I mean, I grew up in the digital age. I'm going to text all this stuff to myself and I'm going to or email it all to myself. But I write it down first because when you write things down, you tend to remember them better. So I'm going to transfer all this to digital. But you can see I've got my Immaculate Dual Acetate, D-Wade Shaq, Finley Nash, Durant, Kobe, Shaq, Penny, Rudy Gay, Collie Stein, Kobe, Shaq. I've got that, so I know I need those. 2017, 16, 17 National Treasures RPA set. I need two more, Ingram and Brown, right? I can obviously remember that, but I'm going to write all these down and text it to myself so I have it in my phone. If the cell drops out, whatever, I'm going to make sure I have it on my phone somewhere beforehand. Because if the cell coverage drops, I don't have, like, if I see a bunch of contenders that I know I need the Kentucky guys, I'm like, oh, did I need the 15 or did I need the cracked ice? Crap. Or was it when the one with the variation with Andrew Harrison dribbling this way or was it with the variation with him going that way? I've already written it down. I have it on my phone. I might be down to no cell coverage, but I can look and be like, oh, I got that one. I don't need that one. But that one I do need. So I'm going to knock that out. So the first is, that's the part of the focus that is definite, and I will come home with some progress towards that. Now, the other side is, I don't want you to think that by any way, when I go to Nationals, I'm very rigid, and I know I will not, I will not buy anything beyond this list. No way. That would be a waste of your time at Nationals. There's so much cool stuff there that you can't see or get anywhere else, and, and you want to build in room for that there. So what I'll do is I'll go through and I'll make a list. And I go by sport. This is my baseball wish list. And you can see this. Some of them are complete dreams. Dreams of stuff that is expensive or not expensive but hard to find. Like a, a Joe Jackson car or a Mickey Mantle 57 Tops or a you know, Jackie Robinson from this year. But... I wrote down 20 cards that I really would like to get. It's a baseball card. I'm going to write down 20 cards I really want to get. It's basketball. 20 I'd like to get for football. So if I see them, and I will see most of these, that if I see a great deal on one, I can say, you know what? That was something I was thinking about before I got here. This is a great deal that I certainly can't get in Banner Elk, North Carolina, or Spruce Pine, North Carolina. This is a good thing. I've saved up some money. This is a good time and a good place to get that. And it's fun to make these lists because not only 
on the show floor and with dealers, somebody at trade night might have some of these. And I can come back and cross that off and be like, you know what? That was something before there I wanted, and I got it from there. It's not part of the set. It's just a wish list. And if there's ever a place for a wish list, it's at the national show. Hands down. Um, what do I take to national? So let me tell you this. If you aren't ready to part with a card, if you're on the fence with a card, then be prepared if you take that card to part with it. Because you're going to see so much stuff that you want that it will push you over the fence to part with it. 99 out of 100 times. I took last year seven boxes of mag, two row boxes of mag cards. Good cards. Seven boxes. I took them to the first trade night. I traded a few of them away. I had six and a half boxes left. The next day, all six and a half were gone. And I came home from uh, National and RBI crew and MC cards with a Mickey Mantle rookie. Something that I didn't even think that I could ever get unless I just straight cash bought one. But they took all the cards, added it up, and they came, and I left with a Mickey Mantle rookie, 1952 tops, PSA 2, dead centered, and a Jordan Bird Irving uh, Magic quad auto to five, nine, five, ten, pop one. Two cards that I had no idea I could get. They weren't on any list and all that. But I took seven boxes of cards I wanted to trade and thought about trading. And when the opportunity came up, it was like absolutely no brainer. No brainer. So I like to have that flexibility to do it. But if you think you're going to go there and not find something that you're willing to trade a card you're on the fence about for, you're crazy. Because you will. You will. Now, they might not be dealing it. They may not be trading it. They may not be selling it. But you're going to then try and sell everything you got to go get this diamond in the rough that you found that you never thought you found. So I guess I would say it, it's going to take discipline if you've got good cards that you really love and you decide to just take them for the heck of it. Be prepared to leave them in your room, um, lock the doors, and 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 let them sit because i remember too it, things will move fast especially thursday friday and saturday friday and saturday especially because it's so jammed and there's so many people there i remember i was looking for a jordan nine rookie because i was working on the fleer 86 fleer set nine or better and i finally found one i found a bunch but it was the right price and i said well i've got this would you trade for it and he said yeah I said, all right, it's in my hotel room. Let me go back and get it. I went back to the hotel room, which was across the street. Got it, came back, it was gone. It was gone because he got too good of a deal. So you want to be able to take stuff with you. You want to be able to have heavy hitters that you can take and trade. And you also want to prepare yourself when you're trading or when you're selling to be patient. There are people that will lowball you. There are people that will... Be rude. They'll be snappy. You'll ha you'll find an equal amount that are really awesome and really cool, and you'll get deals for a card that you didn't expect. But you just you have to be patient. Go tables to tables to tables. You can never go to every single table with one card. That'd be a waste of time. So you've got to identify places that have things that you want, and then you're gonna have to take cards with you in your pack every day that you think can help you get those cards that you want. So on that note, that first day when you're there, what I like to do, unless I see something absolutely mind-blowing, is I'll just walk through and look. I could never examine every single table. It would take the entire first day. I would never get a deal done. But I'll do a good breeze through and walk and identify areas and tables that I want to spend some time at and then I'll go back and start thinking about buying. Because if you go first table, see the cards you want, buy it, you're going to go five tables down, and then you're going to see the same card for 50 bucks less, $100 less, $200 less. So you want to kind of check, check things out. One tip that Ryan had that I thought is great and that I used last year is if you see a table that's just got great stuff and a dealer, take a picture of it or a card that you really love at a table. Take a picture of the table. 
and the dealer there, just snap, step back and snap a picture and snap a picture of the card and text it to yourself or just save it in your notes on your phone and if, if you've got no cell coverage and say, okay, and, and all the tables have numbers above them and all that, and you can ask the dealer what table number it is, but you can say, okay, uh, dealer's got a Tyler Euless RPA booth number 2461, boom. Now let me go look for some more Euless RPAs, but I'll go, I, I, I can remember this because there are that many people there and that many tables and deals. So take what you can part with and sleep well at night. Um, scope out dealers that you want to deal with and dealers that have cards that you want to deal with and um, think about how to deal with people, right? You got to remember, so if you're a dealer and you're sitting behind that table, I mean, you, it goes back to the old saying, you catch more flies with honey, right? Sorry to sound real Southern on you, but you catch more flies with honey, right? So that means be kind, be sweet, be understanding, be patient, because they're going to, they're going to deal, those dealers there are going to deal with so many, excuse my language, hard asses and cutthroat guys that are going to go boom, 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 nah, man, take it or leave it, da, 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 da. And if you have something that they want and they, they to tell you they want it, then make sure that you say, look, you know, explain, I, I, I want your card, I've scoped out the other tables. I really want this card from you. I'm, I'm happy to trade for you. This is what I have. Do you think we can work a deal, sir or ma'am? Or what's the best thing that I can do for you to make sure that I get this card from you, especially if it's one that you really, really are dead set on having? Be kind. I mean, it's it seems like common sense, but there are a lot of folks there that don't use common sense. So, for instance, I spent... 30 years tracking down the 1953 top set. And I don't do this with every card or every trade or every deal, but I said, I'm going to wait and get the last card, which is the card I wanted the most, which was a Satchel Page 1953 tops. And I'm going to buy it from a good person. And I'm going to make sure that I get the right look and feel. And it just feels right to me. Call that crazy. It's a transaction. I understand it. I'm not an over sentimental idiot, but I'd spent a lot of years working on this. I could have done it sooner, but I wanted to finish it the right way. A lot of people had the 1953 Tops Satchel Page, but I found this one dealer from Indiana that was a family. The mom was in there, the sister, the son, the dad, all this. And I said, and I told them the story. I took time when they had time and it wasn't crazy. and said, I just want you to know, I started this set when I was 11 years old and I had no cards and this was something I wanted to do. And I, earned money and mowed lawns and picked up these cards and this over my life. And then I, I did well as a professional and working and I'm at the last part and I want to finish my, I want to finish my set with y'all. So I just want to say thank you for letting me finish it with y'all. And this is, this is cool for me. And they, they knocked off a ton of money. I didn't need it to be knocked off and that was fine. But just being able to share those experiences and those stories with a good person made a difference. And then I was able to use that money to go get something else that meant to me. And I finished the set the right way. So how to act and how to trade, I think is important. How to act on the flip side, I think overall is, is a big thing. But I'll get, I'll get to that at the end. The other thing that you're going to see is a whole lot of you're going to see the huge Panini section. You're going to see the huge Upper Deck section. You're going to see a lot of stores like David Adams and Blowout and Steel City. And they're going to have boxes for sale. And they're going to, it's going to be madness around those shows all the time. Uh, busting some wax at National is a lot of fun, especially if you get to do it with your friends. Go back to the hotel room and do it. Do some at a table with some folks. Say two things. Most most importantly, if you're going to bust wax while you're there, make sure you pick up some supplies. There'll be plenty of supply tables and you can get stuff cheap, but you don't want to get excited busting wax and have to put something in something that's not safe and then have it get ruined before you even get back to the hotel room. So grab a few supplies to keep in your backpack, a couple of mags, a couple of sleeves, and a safe place to put them in a backpack. Um, also, there are not as many store tables as there are dealer tables. So you can hit all the major stores and find significant price differences in boxes and cases 
even just one box that you then other places. So make sure you if you're like I'm dying to have a box one box of immaculate from last year. Well, make sure you check the big store tables because they might have a deal that's worth doing it and doing giveaways. Um, so I, I would definitely recommend doing that, going that route. Um, I'm trying to think and make sure the other stuff, I don't want to, I don't want to leave anything out. You'll find different people doing autographs at different tables, um, that aren't part of the autograph show on the back. It was interesting last year I was walking and I saw, uh, Riddick Bow had his own table was signing autographs. Um, another really cool one was this. In Chicago, I met this guy. For those of you who have seen the movie Field of Dreams, I met the guy that played the dad that only came in near the end. And we actually ended up talking for, you know, 45 minutes. And he actually written a book about behind the scenes on the movie. And I bought the book and he signed the book too. This is one of the best books I've read in the last five years. It was fascinating. And just talking with him and understanding that um, there are really interesting people you can meet if you if you are patient and slow down, uh, it's worth it. And you think, well, of course I'd stop for Riddick Bow or a movie star. Or, I mean, I met Bill Simmons out there, you know, different people on the floor. But you'd be surprised. You'll get going so fast working on deals that you won't you won't see stuff right in front of your face. I mean, so much of your time, your head's down at tables, and then you look up, and it's like, whoa, who's that that just walked past me? And you want to make sure that you've got your awareness turned up for what's going on around outside the tables. And that kind of gets to an overarching point to this on how to act at nationals. If you think this is going to be a Miss Manners lecture, you're crazy. That's not what I'm saying here. What I want to convey is this. Two years ago, I met Ryan at Nationals, um, and we have become wonderful friends. I mean, he is a dear friend of mine. Um, I got to get closer with Big Hurt. I got to uh, meet RBI crew, and then really last year, spent more time with Ryan and Neil and all the guys at R RBI crew. I met Ben, Yo Show Your Hits, Connor, like... The list goes on and on. Col Colby, I mean, I, it, Josh, it, it just, it's a long list. So I, I, I don't want to leave anybody out, but it just, I, ha I have to because it's so many. But when I look back at Nationals, especially two years ago, two years removed, I got some great cards, but I remember the people a lot more. Um, cards is part of it. I'm not saying you're going for to Nationals for date night. Or or uh, or just for friends, but you don't want a deal or cardboard to trump a lasting friendship. So what I'm saying is is if you come to trade night, um, make sure you're talking and sharing and spending good time with folks because you, you don't know what's going to come out of that. And I wouldn't trade my friendship with Ryan and RV Acker and Josh and Cole and, all that, or, and Ben for anything, nothing. Um, and I'm glad that there wasn't some deal, even though we all did deals together about cards that, that took precedence over a good conversation. Hey man, let's put this down for a while and go over here and, and hang out. Or what did you think about this? And being patient and being able to step back from the transactions and deal with the people behind the transactions. Because Nationals is a vehicle. Cards is a vehicle for great people and stories and sharing and hanging out with folks. So I just, and I'll get to this. I'm going to do a whole nother video on just trade night. Um, but that is something that I cannot tell you. The best deal I ever got at Nationals was the the deal, the friends. But by hands down, the best deal that I ever came home with Nationals is new friendships of people I trust and can rely on. So make sure that when you're out there dealing with it, uh, folks, especially your age or have similar interests, and you can feel that happening. You know, rips, cards, legit cards, these guys that 
I talk to, I don't see much, but now I put a name and a face together and we, we can talk online with a, a common interest. I just really suggest it. And that means, yeah, don't be a hard ass on every trade. You know, if at the end of the day at nationals, you're, you're wrapping it up Saturday or Sunday, you've gotten a bunch of the stuff that you want and you have some extra cards, you know that somebody was just dying for that you met at trade night. And you can make their month, you can make their national, their memory of that by just giving it to them. Just give it to them. Just give it to them. It's okay. And you're like, well, you got all these cards. Well, I hope I was doing that before I had this many cards. And I think I was. So just realize that you can make a memory for someone else at this show. You're going to make plenty for yourself and what you bring home. But make sure that you, you keep others in mind. And also, for the folks that can't go, um, we're definitely going to live stream and do all that stuff. But I've, had, I've seen some people actually get really salty because they're like, I'm so tired of all the posts about nationals from the people there and all that. Don't be upset. I mean, I remember when I couldn't go. But realize, even if you're not there, it's only hyping up for the time and the day that you one day will get there. But regardless of that, they're coming home with stuff that you're going to like. They're going to be coming back from nationals with stories, with cards, with things that you're going to enjoy. So you want to support them and say, awesome, man. And, and see, of course, hey, man, can you just take a look around for this for me? And, you know, by God, don't I don't need all 10,000 followers, even the fake ones on Instagram, telling me to look for cards for them. I, I won't be able to do that. But if it's your close friend and he can't go, Bring you back something, you know, do something like that um, and for them, but also for the fit folks at home, support your folks that are there because one day you'll be, you'll be there too and somebody else will be at home. Um, but regardless, it's going to help you guys sitting at home because of the stuff that comes out of there, it's not just cards, it's news. You're going to get news. Well, this is what's going on. That's why I first found out Panini was getting the college license and was going to start making Kentucky cards. That's where I could start getting excited about these different things that were coming down the pike. Um, so I'm just saying, don't, don't sweat it if you can't be there. So I'm going to make a whole video on trade night and um, that's going to be next. I'm going to do it right now. But just for the end of this one, I want you to know trade night. All I got to do is sign the paper and send the money, which I'm going to do tomorrow. I just got the email tonight. It is at the Hilton Rosemont. That is directly across the street. There's like three hotels. There's an Embassy Suites, there's a Marriott, and there's a Hilton Rosemont. All you have to do is walk across the street. Right now, it may change, but it's scheduled to be in the Armstrong room at the Hilton Rosemont. It's a conference room, all right? It's not going to be like some sketchy, like, oh, it's up in my hotel room. Everybody just sit on the bed and we'll trade. God knows, I don't want any parents freaking out. Why is this 40-year-old guy asking you his room? No, no, no. We're having a conference room. It's going to have soft drinks and some basic snacks like crack. I got the ballpark package. There's cracker jacks and pretzels and soft drinks and all that. And it is going to be after the show. I have no desire to take away anybody's time from the show or my own time away from the show. So, it's 6 to 10, I believe, right now. If it changes, I'll let you know, and I'll look at the sheet. But 6 to 10 at the Hilton Rosemont, Thursday night, Friday night, and Saturday night. So you got three times that you can come. It's three or four hours. There'll be tables. You can sit. You can trade. You can talk. There is no cover charge. There's no the, Here's the cover charge. The cover charge is you got to come say hey. You just got to shake my hand and say, hey, man, this is my Twitter handle. It's great to meet you, um, or just good to meet you, or I hate you. I'm the guy that trolls you all the time, or whatever. Um, you can just come in, and just say hey. It's it's for all of us to recreate kind of the old card shop feel that I had in my youth, where you get to hang out and spend some time and just talk sports and in the hobby. But I'll do a more detailed video on that. And as of now, this is how I prep for nationals. I remember I, I make my list. I set my focus. What will I come home with? All right. What will I come home with that I know I want to come home with for my sets or for my PC? I will. I, I try and also get a memorable Chicago player. 
Um, just because it's the city that it's in. If it's Cleveland, I'll try and get a memorable Cleveland player. In Chicago the first year, nothing expensive. Nothing expensive. But I'll get, I got a Devin Hester. Just a De one Devin Hester auto rookie. And that's from my first national ever in Chicago. And I got a Derrick Rose. You know, you can get a Jordan, whatever you want. But pick a player or something that means something from that city. I think that's a cool idea. Um, have your focus. Take cards you're ready to part with. Know how to act when you're, you're trading and dealing with dealers. Make sure that you mark the tables and text and email yourself where to go, what you saw at that table, what you want to do. Don't be afraid if you're there for multiple days to step back and attack something the next day. But you know if it's a really good deal that it will move fast. Make sure that you treat your fellow collectors with a way in a way that creates lasting friendships and um, potential connections for dealing, for trading, for buying as you and your collection grow as a collector. And don't be afraid to ask questions and ask the older folks um, that have been in this a while how they approach things. Um, you never have to worry about asking me except for just my response time. But you can ask and dig deep. It's just, I just get so many, I, I can't respond to them all quickly. But focus, trade, Know what you take. Know you're going to be overwhelmed at first. Be patient. Try and pull back as much as you can because you're not going to want to be patient at first. And then make sure you deal with other people well so you don't just get one card that day at a cutthroat manner, but you set up a relationship to get cards and trade cards for the rest of your life and spend time with the rest of your life. And most of all, enjoy it, man. It's not supposed to be a stressful, awful time. Go enjoy it. It's a ball it's a ball I, I this is my third one and i know if i'm available to go to these things i will never miss another one never because it's worth it to me for all the reasons not just the cards the people the spectacle of it all the boxes the autographs the watching breakers do their thing meeting the guy from field of dreams meeting ben simmons meeting riddick Bo, all these different things so that's video number one. That's a good 32 minutes of me yapping. And you don't want too much of that. So I'll work, I'll do a trade night video and talk also about the Panini party and how that works um, and the details of that. But for now, good night, my friends. It's over past midnight here. I'll probably make the other video now, but this will do. And you guys rock. I cannot tell you how much I'm looking forward to meeting you and hanging out and just soaking up the hobby because obviously that's what I love most. All right, y'all be good. See you soon.